Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about common denominators. We're also going to be talking about decimals, and you will see how that kind of all ties together as we get a little bit closer to the end. First, we're just going to do a quick review on what equivalent fraction means, because in order to find common denominators, you need to sort of already be familiar with equivalent fractions. So if you have a whiteboard or a piece of paper, it would actually be helpful for this lesson if you could kind of write along with me so that you can kind of make sure that you're understanding um, what I'm talking about. So let's review basic fraction terminology. When we have a fraction, we have our numerator on top, and that is our part. And then we have our denominator on the bottom, and that is our whole, what that's divided into. So we have a numerator and denominator. When we're talking about equivalent fractions, we're saying this fraction is written in a different way, but it represents the same amount of stuff. So this is when we were talking about um, egg cartons a lot before we left in fridges. We talked about the egg carton examples. So just to give you a little bit of a visual, here's something that is divided into thirds, right? My denominator is three, this is divided into thirds. If I have two of them, then this shaded part represents two thirds. You with me so far? You don't need to be writing anything yet. Just be listening right now. So we have two thirds. Okay, now if I'm gonna tell you that this is an equivalent fraction, that's the same amount. So say this is pizza cut into thirds. And I'm telling you that that is the same amount of pizza as that, okay? So now we have the same size pizza, but instead of being cut into thirds, it is being cut into sixths. And instead of having two of them, I have four of them. One, two, three, four. What do you notice? Same amount of pizza. Now, might not be a perfect drawing, so it might not be exact, but you get the idea. Four sixths is the same as two thirds. You'll also notice that to get from three to six, I multiply by two, and I can also, whatever I do to the bottom, has to match on the top. If it is truly an equivalent fraction, an equal, equivalent means equal, then that's gonna mean that what happens on the bottom is the same thing that happens on the top. That's gonna mean that those two fractions are equivalent. So that's step one. Okay, so step two is gonna be to find some equivalent fractions to go with these fractions that I have listed up here. So if you have a whiteboard or a piece of paper, if you could just jot down one third. Now I want any equivalent fraction that goes with one third. Any, there's a lot. The easiest thing to do is to just quickly multiply both by two, just like in our other example. So I have times two and times two. One times two is two. Three times two is six. But I could keep going, right? I could also multiply this by four or by five. As long as I do the same thing to the top as I do to the bottom, they will still be equivalent. From here, I could multiply these times two again. So then I would get six times two is 12, and two times two is four. So all of these are equivalent fractions. Okay, now try it for four fifths. Four fifths. So for four fifths, let's just say for fun, I wanna do times three to find an equivalent fraction. So five times three is 15, four times three is 12. 12 fifteenths. Now what about for eight tenths? For eight tenths, let's say I go like this. And I give you the denominator that I want it to be. Do you have enough information to figure out what this numerator has to be? You do. Because I have to figure out the puzzle. How do I get from 10 to five? How do I get from 10 to five? Well, I know that five is half of 10, and I know that 10 divided by two is five. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So that means that I have to also do divided by two here, and then that means that I can plug in this answer over here. So step two is to find equivalent fractions. Now we're gonna go into common denominators. 
So if you guys recall, in order to add fractions, they have to have the same denominator. And then that denominator then just carries over. That is because we can't really add two unlike things like this. Like we wouldn't be able to add pizza cut in thirds with pizza cut in sixths because they're two different denominators. We have to have our pizzas cut into the same amount. So the easiest way to find a common denominator is if one of your numbers can be the common denominator. Common means same. So what denominator do they have that they can both use? That's what we're looking for now. Now, luckily with both of these examples, I can use one of the denominators that I already have. I don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? I can just use six. Can I get three to six? Yes, I can. I can get three to six by doing, what's the answer to my puzzle to get from one to the other? Times two. Three times two is six. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. One times two is two. So now I have two six plus two six. And when I add, my denominator just carries because my amount of pizza, the way that I cut it, that hasn't changed. That is still six. But how many slices of pizza do I have? I have four because two plus two is four. So I found the common denominator, then I added and I got an answer. Over here, can I use one of my denominators as my common denominator to get them to be the same? I can, I can use eight. And again, I know to get from four to eight, what's my answer to my puzzle times two, which means that four times two is eight and three times two is six. My new addition problem is six eighths plus six eighths, which is 12 eighths, which you may recall is an improper fraction, but we're actually not going to tackle that today. We're just going to focus on this. Now we're going to figure out what to do if neither one of our numbers can be the common denominator. All right, so now I have two sets of fractions. I have two thirds and one half, and I need to find a common denominator, but I can't go from three to two or from two to three, at least not without getting into not un numbers that are decimals. So I need to figure out what can both of these go to, and that's going to be my common denominator. So I'm gonna start with my, since two is an even number, and it's kind of easy to think like, well, is that divisible by two? I'm actually gonna start with three, and I'm going to start skip counting with one of my numbers. So I'm going to skip count using one of my denominators. So that's what I'm working on right now. So for me, that would look like me going three, six, and I'm checking to see, do any of the numbers I say, can that go in there? Well, I already got it. I can get three to six. Can I also get two to six? I can. So three to six is times two, which means I have to do times two up here, which is four. Two to six, two, four, six, is times three, which means I also have to do times three up here. Did you get that? That's a little bit of an extra step than we had before. I'm gonna go over that one more time. One more example. All right, so we're gonna try this one more time. I have four and six, and I want a common denominator between four and six. But I can't do anything to get from four to six or from six to four, so I can't use one of those. That means I need to pick a number, I need to skip count, and I need to see if there's a number that they can both go into. So you should kind of your mind be going back to when we talked about factors and multiples. So I'm gonna find multiples of this number, and see if any of those multiples match this number. So if you're still having a little bit of trouble, I'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick. So I kind of did it in my head last time and I wanna show you something a little different. I need to skip count by fours. So down here, I'm gonna skip count by fours out here. Four, eight, 12, 16. So I have my first four multiples down here. So I skip counted, but now I need to skip count with my other number. So now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go six, 
12, 18. What do my two lists of multiples have in common? Let's look. Four is not in common, eight's not in common, 12 is in common. That must mean that 12 is my lowest common denominator. Now I know that's my answer to my puzzle. I can get from four to 12, and I can also get from six to 12. Okay, how do I get from four to 12? Four, eight, 12 times three. One times three is three. How do I get from six to 12? Times two, three times two is six. So now I have the common denominator. And if the question asks you, what's the common denominator? The common denominator for these two fractions is 12. All right, so now we're gonna take what we just went over, which was finding new denominators for numbers, and we're gonna apply that to decimals. So you guys should remember this. This is a review, but it's really important and I don't want us to forget. So if I'm giving you a fraction and I'm asking you to make it into a decimal, because fractions are decimals and decimals are fractions, but we have to know how to be able to go back and forth. You need to put that number over, meaning it has a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000. If you remember our place value for decimals, we have tenths, hundredths, thousandths. You have to say that at the end, okay? So if I have 40 hundredths, okay, think of like 100 pennies being a dollar. I have 40 cents. I bet you would know how to write 40 cents as a decimal. You would probably write it like that. Now, if you remember the trick I showed you in class, my trick that I showed you in class was that however many zeros you have is how many spaces you want to have that fill that number. So if I'm over 10, 100, or 1,000, am I? Yep, I'm over 100, check. And I wanna put that into a decimal. I'm gonna count my places here. I'm gonna put those dashes over here. And then I'm gonna take this number and fill it into the dashes. Look familiar? We did do this. Okay, so now if I have 75 over 100, two zeros, two spaces, check if you're over 10, 100, or 1,000, and I am, take my top number, fill it in the spaces. Don't skip writing those spaces. They really help us and stop us from making mistakes. One really common mistake that I remember many, many, many of us talking about after that last assessment. If I have something like this, okay, a lot of kids go like this. But guess what? After a decimal, I can add zeros and my number will stay the same. So how many cents is this really? This is really 30 cents, but this says three cents out of 100 cents. Very, very common error. How would you write three cents? If I told you that ice cream costs $1 and three cents, you go like that, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do up here. And that's where my two zeros, two spaces trick comes in really, really handy. Two zeros, two spaces. How do I write a three in two spaces? Well, I don't want it to be a 30, so I have to go like this. So having the two zeros, two spaces trick is really, really helpful to make sure that you don't make this very, very, very common error. So I think we know how to go when we are over 10, 100, or 1,000. But what if we're not? What if I tell you to make that into a decimal? Am I ready? A number must be over 10, 100, or 1,000. Am I ready? I'm not. Can I get 25 to 10, 100, or 1,000? Think for a second. It'd be a little difficult to go backwards to 10. It wouldn't come out even. Think of it like quarters. 25 times something is going to give me 100. 25 times 4 is going to give me 100. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Three times four is 12. Now am I ready to put this over a decimal into a decimal? I am. 
two zeros, two spaces, top number comes down. So 3 25ths is 0 0.12. Got that? A little trickier? If you have a piece of paper, you can try this next one. If you're ready to go with this and you feel like you're ready to go do the Google Forms, you can go, you can leave me. Otherwise, I'm gonna do one more example, okay? So we're gonna do the example of three fifths. And I'm asking you to put that into a decimal. Am I ready? Do I have it over 10, 100, or 1,000? I do not. When am I gonna get it to? Well, I could get five to 100, but I'd have to multiply a much bigger number. It'd be easier to get five over 10. What's my formula here, right? What's the answer to my puzzle? How do I get from five to 10 times two? What I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. I hope you're saying it at home. So sorry, that's my alarm going off. So times two, times two, three times two is six. Now, am I ready to put that into a decimal? I am. One zero one space, my six comes right down. So three fifths is the same as six tenths, which is the same as 0.6. And I can even check that further by looking up at my place value up here, six tenths. Does it match up? It does. So all of this is related, finding equivalent fractions, common denominators, and then taking all that information together finding a common denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000 in order to put that number into a decimal. So go check out those Google Forms, but most of all, come see me in Google Hangouts if you have any questions, and I will do my best to work through the problems with you and help you out. Have a great day.